This is Nancy with Creative Fun, and today's topic is what is a knitting machine and how do they work? Now this is not going to be extremely technical, but I do want to show you the general idea of what a knitting machine is and what it does. Um, this here is a Knit King KH930. I know that because right here on the left hand side at the top it says Knit King. And down here on the far right hand side there's a little plate with the model. It says Knit King Model KH930 and it tells me the volts made in Japan. There's the plug for, um, it's an electronic machine so I can plug it in and it will do patterning from the memory and also other ways. One myth that people have about knitting machines is that a knitting machine is cheating and that it um, is not fair to knit with a knitting machine that it doesn't take talent but it takes a lot of talent and a lot of time to learn how to knit by uh, by machine and uh, for some people they just prefer it other people prefer to hold the yarn in their hands okay so uh, true confessions before we get started this knitting machine has a carriage right here that is not the standard carriage that goes with a 930 because I purchased this knitting machine at a thrift shop for $25 but it didn't have the carriage. But I already had a carriage from a 910. So this is a Brother KH910 knitting carriage that I'm using on a Knit King KH930. Knit King's made by Brother. And there you have that. Let me tell you a little bit about um, the machine. Most knitting machines um, come in different sizes. This one's a standard size, and that means that it has 4.5 millimeters between each of the needles. This is the needle bed. And these are the needles and this machine has 200 needles on it and the needles come out like this poke it down a little bit they come out like this and they go back in like this when the carriage passes over them so out and in and typically they go out this one this one this one this one you know like this and then they're all the way out and then as these come out the ones on the right go in and as the, the carriage passes, yarn that goes across the hooks, like this, yarn is pulled back. And if you look at one of these hooks, let me show you what it looks like. There's a hook. Okay. There's a hook, and it's got a latch. It's like a latch hook for um, making rugs. Except it's got this little thing down at the end, it sticks up. That is what moves back and forth. That's what these nubbies are right here. That's the technical term, nubbies. Um, it's what moves. These go up and down inside the carriage, out and in, inside the carriage, moving the hook in, out and in. <clears throat> and let's see if I can give you a little demo. Let's say that we have already knit one row, or we did a cast on row. We have yarn that's already on here. And then when the um, carriage takes, pushes the needle out, the yarn crosses over in front of the needle, the this tip part here, right here, the hook. And then the the as it goes back in, let me see if I can do this. Goes back in. Look what happens. The hook latch closes, and the yarn goes through the little latch and pulls it out. And then this goes out like this. And you do it again. The yarn, the carriage passes, the yarn goes into the hook. Like so. The yarn is pulled over the top. Just like so. But the machine is doing that part. You still have to do all the increasing, the decreasing, the planning, the cabling, <clears throat> all that by yourself. The machine doesn't do it. However, some machines will do the patterning, meaning this one and some of the others have different ways that you can pattern a machine so that you can print, you can uh, knit fair aisle. So it does simplify that portion of it, um, but it doesn't actually simplify the making of a sock. You can't just put yarn in there and program it and have a sock come out. That does not happen. And that, yes, would seem like cheating, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Um, when I have this plugged in, I can plug in a personalized pattern as I want by entering in black and white, but basically a binary code for the pattern. Knit this one, don't knit that one. Or um, there's about 555 patterns that are already included in here that correspond with a pattern book. 
Uh, but I digress a little bit. Let me show you what the uh, general idea is. You have 200 needles here and a carriage. And you have a tension rod right here. The tension rod goes up. Let me show you what happens. You take your yarn or your, th your uh, thread, thin yarn, for a machine like this that's a, a standard size, um, you need sport weight yarn or something pretty thin to work with it, or you need to work every other needle. Otherwise, you would work with a 9 millimeter machine, a.k.a. a bulky B-U-L-K-Y, bulky, I say it funny, machine. You have the yarn on a cone, like so. Yarn comes up and it goes through a, um, I don't know what you call this, a separator right back here. Do you see that thing right there? Through there. Let me get you a close up. Through this part right here. And then it goes up. Hard to do this one handed. Let's try it. Up to the tension, the top of the tension rod, the tension mast, and it goes in this little section right here, down. This controls how tight the yarn goes through. Your your uh, tension rod may look a little bit different than mine. Then through this, then down to this. And I want to stick on the right side, I can put two colors in. Down and up, do this little loopy thing, and then, there's an antenna up here, actually two of them. You pull the one antenna down, and you want to thread your yarn through the little antenna thing. So, um, it's really just a loop that comes down, kind of like a paper clip, but you want to stick it down on the one side, and pull it down, like so, and it goes through. That creates tension, kind of like, uh, I guess, a... A uh, sewing machine would do that. And speaking of sewing machines, working with a knitting machine is not much different. It's not cheating unless you consider knitting with a sewing machine. Cheating. All right. Um, once you have the yarn through the tension mast, you have to get it started on the um, needles that you're going to use. And I'm just going to do a few of them. You have to start out by, um, by wrapping them around generally, each one like so and then this yarn is going to go into the carriage and the carriage is going to go across and knit the yarn this needs to be done loosely but there's other videos this is called an e-wrap cast on and there's faster ways to do it but this will not unravel okay you take it like that and then you have to put it into the carriage like so. Open a little door, slide it in, and then close the door. Next step is to put some kind of comb. There's various sizes of these combs that have a hook on the end, and you put that onto your knitting to hold it down. I did two too many, so I'm going to take off two. There we go. For the size of my comb. All right, and then um, you set the tension here. Zero is super tight for really fine yarn. Ten is super loose or good for thicker yarn. And since I'm going to go somewhere in the middle for this one, at a tension six. Okay. And you... I'm going to hold this. You're supposed to put weights down here, too. Knit across. And back. And every time I go across, it knits a row. A plain row. If I wanted something else, if I want to make it increase or decrease, then I'd have to manipulate these by hand. Or turn on the pattern if I wanted to have a pattern show up. The weights that you put on look like this. There's a variety of types. And you set that down onto the cast on comb so you don't have to hold it down. Up here, we have a row counter. So it tells me how many rows I've done, which is 18. So I've done 18 rows in about half a minute, I'd say. Um, 
All right, now that I've shown you how the um, the yarn, how the carriage knits the yarn, I kind of want to take want to take the front of the knitting carriage off. And you do that by unscrewing these right here and pulling this off like this. I want to show you what happens. I'm going to open this up and take my yarn out. All right, now it's um, not. There's no front to it. You don't really knit like this, but I want to show you for demonstration purposes. Here's what happens when the yarn goes, when the carriage passes over. Watch what happens. I think I might, I'll do this a few times for you. I'm going to push this in because the, the uh, weaving brushes would keep this back. Do you notice how the yarn is starting to, the needles are starting to come out like so? And as they come out, see how the, um, see right here how the, the latch the, the yarn that's existing yarn is behind the latch. So as it goes across, the yarn would be laid across like this. And it starts getting pulled back. Right here. It's starting to close. I gotta pull this back here. Those weaving brushes would do that. All right. Well, I'm not doing it quite right because I'm not the machine. But I think you get the idea. Let's try it again. All right, let's see if you can see this again. I've got the flash on. The knitting carriage is going across. I'm going to hold, sorry, this part back. And the hook, as it goes across, the um, needles are coming out. And the yarn would be placed into the latches. As it goes across, the yarn that's already on the hook pushes the latch over the new yarn that's in the top of the needle, closing it in, and knitting it through to form a new row. And that's how a knitting machine knits. All right, it's a lot easier not to do it by hand and let the carriage do it, that's for sure. So um, <clears throat> let me show you the underside of the carriage and we'll be done. The bottom of the knitting carriage looks like this. It's a series of, of levers and I believe there's magnets under here, but I'm not really sure. Um, this here is the back rail that fits onto the back of the machine. And a lot of newbies often don't get it on that rail. And there's a ridge up here, so it's got to fit on the machine between this rail and this ridge right here. So here is a needle, and the needle would travel along a path in here, going across, that would push it up and down and around according to however you stuck the needle. And it would pass through here, making the needle go out and in at the right times in order for it to knit. That's my technical explanation. Um... That's about it. I welcome your questions, comments, and suggestions, and uh, have a great day.